Okay, so in this video, we're going to look at adding a ketchup bottle, and that when you click on it, you can apply ketchup to the hamburger. Now, if you notice, we have a ketchup bottle down here now. So over here in the preview, you can get a closer look at it. Unlike these objects, which were created externally, this was created internally. I didn't bother recording it because the process is pretty simple. If you look at it, you can see it's just three cylinders. So you just come up to Game Object, 3D Object, and you create three cylinders. They all have the same center point, they just have different proportions. So this first one I kept the normal proportions. This second cylinder, the Y scale is much, much lower, so that way I shrunk it vertically. I also trimmed the X and uh, Z values as well, so it's not quite as wide as the bottle itself. And then the tip itself is yet another cylinder. In that case, its Y scale is a little bit more than this, but a little bit, well, a lot less than this. But its X and Z scales are much, much smaller. In other words, you're just changing the X, Y, and Z scale. That all, that's all you're doing. You're making something shorter. You're making something more narrow. That's all. Kind of tedious to watch, so I didn't bother recording it. Not to mention that you might not even create yours internally. You might be making it, again, in Paint 3D or purchasing it from someone. So, let's take our bottle. And if you notice, because I created it in um, Unity, it already has components. So it's already a prefab. Because I created it in the scene and then tossed it down here, which turned it into a prefab. So we'll put this into the scene. Let's just slide that over. Actually, let's see. Yeah, that can be pushed down a little bit. And we'll put it right there. Okay, so what doesn't this have? This doesn't have a collider. So add component, physics, and we'll again use a box collider. You can see the box collider, the green surrounding doesn't quite come up high enough. So if someone was to click here, it might not click on the collider. So you might want to make that collider come out a little bit more. So we click on edit collider. And actually the dot is really hard to see. So let's just do this this way. So we'll make the Y size of the collider itself. Let's make that like 0.5. So you can see it just got taller. And now we'll push it up vertically, like 0.3. So now you can see it's pretty much lined up at the bottom and now comes up to the top. So now you have your box collider. So basically, this is going to function a lot like this. You're going to click on it. And rather than directly applying a ketchup right away, instead it's going to change a variable. Just as this had a variable, this will have a variable as well. And it's going to indicate that you're ready to place ketchup on the hamburger. When you click on the hamburger, it will then instantiate it. So in other words, it's really identical to this process. But it's just you're using a different model. So rather than having the cheese model appear on the hamburger, it's the ketchup model that will appear on the hamburger. So that means we need the hamburger to be aware of the ketchup model. So not the bottle, but the model itself. So when we clicked on burger, see here's a cheese object. We're going to have to add the ketchup object now. So let's do that first. So for the burger patty, it's called patty underscore con. So patty underscore con, and there's the variable up there. So public transform, and we'll call this ketchup. And again, OBJ, it's arbitrary. You don't have to do that, but that way when I see it in a list, I know it's an object. We'll save, that way the variable appears. There it is. And now we take the ketchup and we put it there. And now the patty is aware of the ketchup object. So now we need a script on the ketchup bottle so that we can click on it. So just as we added a script 
to the cheese, we need to add one to the ketchup. So again, you could try to consolidate the function into, I'll show you these functionalities into one or at least less scripts, but we're gonna make one separate, one for each object. So right click, create, and C sharp, and this will be ketchup bottle. So we'll click on the object and we'll take our ketchup bottle script and attach it. And now we'll open this up. Click OK at the bottom if you get this message. Now what we're going to do is we're going to, as I said, emulate what was done for a cheese, and that is we need to have an on mouse down and we need to have a new variable. This variable, as I said, was generated in game flow. So let's start with that. So public, static, string, and we'll use the same naming. We'll call this place ketchup. Starts off as a no, and now you've added that new variable. We go to the ketchup bottle, and again, we'll use this as a model. So it's just on mouse down, gameflow dot, and it'll be place ketchup equals y. So outside of start, outside of update, on mouse down. Again, it's case sensitive, very easy to make a mistake. We have to reference game flow because that is the script in which the variable is declared. And there's place ketchup and it gets set to Y for yes. Again, we're just repeating what we did before for cheese, which means now we have to go to the patty and for on mouse down, we check to see if place cheese is set to yes. Now we're going to see is place cheese set to, uh, if, if place ketchup is set to yes. And then we'll instantiate this instead of this. So basically we can copy this. We just have to make sure that we make the corresponding changes. Again, copying like that is twofold. One, partially because I'm lazy, and also to reiterate that you're doing really the same thing. You're not relearning, you're not learning something new, you're just repeating something that we've already used. So this case, it is place ketchup. So if place ketchup is set to yes, then it is the ketchup object. And we want to use ketchup objects rotation. And there's one last change we have to make because if you notice right now, if place cheese is set to no, the hamburger gets moved. So what's going to happen is you'd place the ketchup, but then the hamburger would move immediately. So for now, we need to check the place ketchup variable as well. But like I said, eventually we'll put in controls so is that all the toppings get placed on the um, hamburger, uh, uh, on the bun itself, rather uh, than when the hamburger is on the grill. So what we do is we just need to check for this, and we just want to check to see if it's no. So if you check in multiple variables, you do that because the whole thing has to be within parentheses as well as each check has to be within parentheses. So it looks a little bit weird when you first see it. So again, each thing that you're checking is in a parentheses and then everything combined is in its own set of parentheses. So if you click next to the parentheses, you'll see the matching one. And then we said we want to set this to no. So 
If you are not placing cheese and you're not placing ketchup, then move the hamburger. Again, this is a uh, temporary solution because eventually we'll prevent the toppings from being put over on the grill. So let's run it. So we'll place our bun, place our hamburger, click on ketchup, ketchup appears. As you can see, it's kind of floating. So like I said, we'll eventually apply gravity so as that, um, so as that things kind of fall into place. So let's do that one more time. So bun, hamburger, we move the hamburger, click on the ketchup, ketchup appears here. So again, the placing of the, of the topping it's looking at the location of the hamburger so you don't have to coat it all over again. So uh, not trying to uh, be redundant and, and beat the issue to death, but uh, it shows just how powerful this is. That you, the programmer, may not know the exact coordinates, but you can still utilize those coordinates. It's a very important lesson to take away from this uh, tutorial. So even if you don't know the coordinates, it doesn't matter. You can still utilize them. Okay, so let's see how that works with the cheese now, because now you've got some collider issues. But let's see how it works. So let's do the bun, the hamburger, move the hamburger. We'll click on cheese. Now let's click on the ketchup. See, it's seeing the, the, the collider box of the um, cheese it doesn't see you as clicking on the hamburger, it sees you clicking on the cheese. So you have to kind of click where there's no collider. So obviously, not good. You don't want that to happen. So what's going to, a possible uh, solution would be to disable the cheese once it's placed, because once it's placed, you can't take it off. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a new script attached to the cheese object, and it's going to disable that box collider. So let's right-click, create, C-sharp. We'll call this cheese slice. We'll click on our cheese object. We'll put cheese slice on it. And quick reminder, these are called components. So we're going to use a statement called get component to modify this one. Specifically, we're going to disable it. So opening the script and in the initialization area, that is the start section, we're going to disable that component. So get component. Which component? Well, the box collider component. What do we want to do? Let's look at its enabled status and set it to false. Quick pause here. You can actually disable most components. Not all, but most. So if for some reason you want to suspend some functionality, I won't go into all the examples now, but uh, if you want to suspend functionality, you can just disable the corresponding component. Now, on the surface, this might seem OK. But if you recall, this was a prefab. So we took the prefab, we put it here. Well, now it's showing that cheese slice script. So we need to remove it from that specific one. So make sure the prefab has it. And the one here does not, because if this one has it, you'll get an error message saying there's no box collider. But as you recall, we removed the box collider. So actually, if we hadn't removed the box collider earlier, it would actually uh, worked out OK, because we would be disabling it now. Again, not a big deal. But sometimes if you if you know where you're going with a project, you don't have to make those changes. So we disable the box collider, and that really should do it. So when you now click on the hamburger, even if there's cheese on it, it won't detect the, uh, the clicking on the cheese because there's no collider there. 
because again, seeing an object means nothing. There actually has to be a collider component. Let's put our hamburger, our bun, move our hamburger, move our cheese, click on the ketchup, and there you go. As you could see, I was like dead center. So by removing, well not removing, excuse me, by disabling the collider, it now uh, properly detects. And then we can put our bun on top. So a uh, couple issues though. So again, we, we, we got ourselves closer to where we, where we wanna be, but if we use gravity, then that collider will be an issue. The fact that it's not detecting it. If we apply gravity to the cheese, it'll just fall straight through. So again, uh, we'll deal with that as we get closer to the finish line. It's possible that we'll just give pre-established um, uh, levels rather than using um, gravity. We might just create pre-established levels for each object. So I think that should about do it for this video. In the next video, we'll probably look at the cooking of the hamburger. So what will happen is right now it has a default texture. What you can do is you can modify so it has multiple different textures or you can change uh, the color shading of the texture so that first it'll be like pink and then it'll be light brown then medium brown and then black if it burns you can add a particle system so smoke is going up in the air uh, things like that uh, which means we also need to add a trash bin which didn't really save any space for here but that's easy enough we can just push these crates over and in this corner there can be a trash bin and so uh, you would be able to click on the on the hamburger and rather than having a pair in the bun you could toss it in the trash well that should do it for this video then and if you have any questions just let me know